What is dollarization and how can it impact a country's economy? A fascinating question indeed. Today, we're going to dive into the intriguing world of dollarization. At its core, dollarization is the process where a nation adopts a foreign currency, often the United States dollar, as its official legal tender in lieu of its own domestic currency. But why would a country choose to do this, you might ask? Well, it's often seen as a strategy to stabilize an economy during times of economic turmoil, particularly during hyperinflation. Hyperinflation can render a country's own currency virtually worthless, and adopting a stronger, more stable currency like the dollar can offer a lifeline. However, it's not all smooth sailing. The impact of dollarization can be far-reaching, and it's not always positive. It can import another country's inflation rate, potentially exacerbating or alleviating a nation's economic woes. The effects can be wide-ranging, impacting everything from inflation rates to fiscal policy, and even political stability. Dollarization can have significant implications on an economy, both positive and negative, which we'll delve into shortly. Now, let's turn our focus to Argentina, a country currently considering dollarization. Argentina's newly elected president, Javier Malay, has a bold proposal on the table. He wants to dollarize the economy and put a full stop to the operations of the central bank. Quite a revolutionary idea, wouldn't you say? But it's not as outlandish as it might sound at first blush. You see, unofficial dollarization has been a recurring theme in Argentina's economic narrative due to rampant inflation. When the local currency loses value at a rapid pace, people naturally turn to a more stable alternative, like the US dollar. It's a survival instinct, a way to protect their purchasing power. So, what would happen if Argentina went ahead with official dollarization? Well, it would essentially mean importing another country's inflation rate, in this case, that of the United States. This could potentially address Argentina's inflation problem, offering a semblance of stability in an otherwise turbulent economy. But here's the rub. While dollarization might act as a stopgap measure, it doesn't address the root causes of Argentina's economic instability. It's akin to treating the symptoms of an illness, without really curing the disease itself. Yet, is dollarization a silver bullet for Argentina's economic woes? Not quite. While dollarization might help control inflation, it's not the complete solution. Enter fiscal reform. This is a necessary step to address a country's growing debt. You see, without fiscal reform, the burden of debt keeps piling up, and dollarization alone cannot dig us out of that hole. It's like trying to empty the ocean with a bucket. Now imagine a country's economy as a ship. Monetary reform, such as dollarization, is akin to adjusting the sails to catch the wind better. However, fiscal reform is like patching up the holes in the hull. It's all about balancing the budget, increasing tax revenues, and cutting unnecessary spending. This way, the ship doesn't sink under the weight of its own debt. So, monetary and fiscal reforms should go hand in hand, complementing each other. It's a dual approach to ensure the ship sails smoothly and doesn't take on water. Let's not forget, the goal is not just to stay afloat, but to chart a course towards prosperity. Without fiscal reform, dollarization may not yield the desired results, a lesson we can learn from Zimbabwe. Speaking of Zimbabwe, let's take a quick journey to Africa and explore Zimbabwe's experience with dollarization. The Southern African nation offers a fascinating case study. Zimbabwe grappled with hyperinflation, a fiscal issue that spiraled out of control, transforming everyday transactions into a nightmare. Picture this, the price of a loaf of bread doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling within a matter of hours. In an attempt to tame this economic beast, Zimbabwe adopted dollarization. This move helped to stabilize the economy by curbing inflation. The US dollar, being a strong and globally recognized currency, brought relief to Zimbabwe's economy. Prices stabilized and the general cost of living became somewhat predictable. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. While dollarization tackled inflation, it couldn't solve all of Zimbabwe's economic problems. Political instability continued to rock the boat. The nation grappled with policy inconsistencies, a lack of foreign investment, and a myriad of other issues that hindered economic progress. Moreover, Zimbabwe's national debt continued to balloon, further complicating the economic picture. The adoption of the US dollar did not automatically translate to a reduction in the country's debt burden. Zimbabwe's story is a stark reminder that while dollarization can address inflation, it's not a magic remedy for all economic issues. So, what have we learned today about dollarization? We've explored its meaning, the process of replacing a country's currency with the US dollar. 
We've examined Argentina's case, where incoming President Javier Millet has proposed dollarization to combat inflation. Yet, we also underlined the crucial importance of fiscal reform, especially in managing growing national debt. Using Zimbabwe as an example, we've seen how dollarization can reduce hyperinflation, but without stability and fiscal discipline, progress can be hindered. As we've seen, the economic world is complex and there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Dollarization might work for some, but it's certainly not a cure-all. Until next time, keep exploring the fascinating world of economics.